All right, thanks everyone for being here today. Before I talk about the uh, road trip to Washington, I just wanted to uh, thank all of our fans for creating a great atmosphere in the woodshed the past couple weeks. Um, it's been electric. The student section has been outstanding. We really appreciate that. Um, congrat congratulate Jacoby on um, getting the uh, Big Ten Defense Player of the Week uh, for the second straight week. And he leads the nation in sacks and tackles for loss and forced fumbles. Um, you know, obviously we need to get better in all three phases, and that's, that's our focus. Uh, right now, the, we just finished our first practice uh, for Washington, and so it's all about stacking days and, uh, and getting better. So with that, I'll open it up. Hey, Mel, I'm fronting here. I was wondering, real quick, do you expect Jane Reed to be available on Saturday? Yeah, he was, he was sore, so uh, he, you know, he'll be ready when he's ready. And then as far as Michael Penix is concerned, you guys obviously faced him in 20, and then I know last year it was kind of questionable. How much does that prep you've already kind of built in previous years, does that pay off, right? even though your personnel is, is different now in the secondary and overall? Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to help us very much, other than we, we know he's a, he's, a, he's a great player and he's playing at a very high level right now. No, I'm wondering, um, with, with the panic situation, I mean, how much do you go back and look at that tape with him working with Kalen DeBoer mm -hmm. in Indiana? And I guess, what have you seen that kind of translates in Washington's tape versus that Indiana tape? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's just a really good player. Um, you know, Coach does a really good job with him. And, uh, and obviously, you know, he's playing at a really high level right now. I mean, they're, they're lighting it up, so... Um, you know there are some some things that we can gather, but you know that was a that was a couple of years ago, you know. And so, um, you know, we'll just uh, know what he's shown so far this year uh, with Coach DeBoer is uh, has been pretty impressive. Now you've been home for a couple of weeks. First road game. Do you welcome this environment? Do you welcome this challenge? The, the camaraderie of a team going on the road. Yeah, well, it's, um, you know, it is going to be a challenge for us. And, you know, we're going to have to prepare, you know, the right way. It's going to be about not just the required work, um, but it's going to be the unrequired work, you know, the extra, um, you know, that people don't see, people don't do, people don't want to do um, that's uh, this necessary to, you know, prepare to go on the road and, um, and be able to get the job done and get against a, a very good football team. So, um, yeah, we're, we're preparing for, for that challenge, absolutely. Now, I want to try, try and draw a comparison to going to Miami last year. Obviously, the, the big focus in Miami was the weather and all that last year. But the idea of going on the road early against a Power 5 team and having success in that sort of environment. Can you draw anything from that last year and how you guys were able to do that in, in this trip, or are they kind of totally two separate things? Well, in order to go on the road, you know, you have to, you have to play opportunistic offense, you know, relentless defense, and you have to be flawless on special teams. And so, uh, you know, being in best condition is going to be a part of it. We have to do a great job of preparing, um, and we have to do a great job improving in all three phases, technique and fundamentals. So we can play smart, and play fast, and play physical out there. I'm not sure how many parallels there are other than, you know, you go on the road, um, you have to be ready to play and be, be prepared to play uh, four quarters of football with extreme effort and physicality and make sure the players know what to do. Mel, two, three, two games, I think some things you really liked about your team and some things that you didn't like as much. Do you feel like you've learned stuff about your team that you didn't know before and do you think it, it, they'll be ready for their first uh, big road game? Yeah, we're going to prepare like crazy. I mean, that's, that's my job and our job as a staff, you know, to make sure that the players are prepared, you know, for, uh, for the games, whether it's home, you know, on the road or, or you know, regardless of who we play. I mean, the preparation is key and so, uh, you know, I, I know that our team will play hard. I know they they understand that that um, that you have to improve. You know, and you know we did that. You know, throughout the week last week, 
it, was, it had an intentional focus, and um, you know, we were very uncomfortable last week. Um, and uh, you know, we have to prepare, um, you know, to a standard, so so that we can so that we can play at a high level. Um, but I mean. You, you know a little. You know you learn a little bit about your guys every single day. You know there's always there's always uh, you know, there's always you know more information and and then you see players, individual players develop and then and emerge and then you see the team um, how the team responds to adversity and how the team handles success and so. Um, I'm encouraged by what I see so far, um, but you know, right now we we have one game. You know, that's our focus. Is one game is is Washington. It's a very good football team. They've had top recruiting classes, um, top 25 recruiting classes the last you know four or five years. Um, so they got really good players. Coach DeBoer has been successful everywhere he's been. He's a he's an excellent football coach, and they have, you know, they have they have very good personnel, and that's a tough place to play. And so, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna find out more about our team uh, on Saturday. But right now, for us, it's about stacking days in our preparation. One, like today, we had a we had a we had a. Uh, we stacked today. We did it. We got the job done today in our in our preparation in the meetings and practice, um, and then for the rest of the day, it's going to be about the the unrequired work, and then um, then we'll move on to uh, tomorrow. And we need to stack that day, which is going we're, we're going to have the pads on. It's going to be a longer practice. It's going to be more physical. The, the game plan will unfold more uh, tomorrow. Um, we have we have to have. Uh, we have to raise our level of intensity in everything that we do, in our focus, and focus is a skill. And so, uh, you know, we're we're really um, going to have our heads down and really focusing on the task at hand. This is the preparation. What are the, the unrequired things you keep referencing? Well, I mean, it's it's just like uh, in any other like business or endeavor. You know, you have things that you have things that. Um, you know, are just things that are basically required, um, almost like the minimum, um, anything. And then there's extra work. And if you want to be great, you know, you have to do extra things to get better. And so that's players on their discretionary time making choices and decisions that will, will put them in a position to, you know, do extra you know, and uh, which uh, and that's coaches as well and staff. You know, you know, do do more than what's prescribed or required. So Matt mentioned that film, the film study, you know, things like that. Um, you know, there's a uh, you know treatment, things like that. You know, your body is your business, so you know, whatever you can do. Um, extra to take care of yourself. You know, we're asking our guys to go to bed an hour earlier um, this week in preparation for the uh, trip from you know east to west. And then you know, obviously with um, you know the hydration and things like that. I mean, like just just basically showing up for when we have you know prescribed meetings and when we have. Uh, and when we have, uh, you know, practice and things like that, I mean, the, the guys are going to do that. Um, you know, but really, you know, because the margins are, are so slim, you know, um, you know, when you're competing at a high level, you know, if you want to, if you want to get ahead in anything that you're doing, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, uh, you know, you're going to have to do a little bit more. You're going to have to do extra if you want to be great. And, um, you, you can't be great. At anything, if you if you're not willing to to push a little more, and do a little extra work. Matt mentioned the the Miami comparison, uh, and and I'm I'm wondering from a standpoint of what that if if you do go on the road and you're able to 
you put in the unrequired things, which seemed like you did last year, and the, sort of the confidence and swagger that came out of that game. Is there, is there an opportunity with a, a game like this, if you do those things, to be able to show the fruits of it a little bit? Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily. Here's the, way, here's the way I see it. Um, like I told the players this morning, you know, we're, you know, we're building uh, the story of this year's team right now. Uh, last year's team is is gone, and we don't. That, that's a that's a different team. This is a this is a new team. This is a this is a uh, a new season, and so um, you know we're focused on you know what we have to do on a day to day basis to prepare you know to to play good football, and so. Um, and that's and that's where our focus needs to be. And once, if you get beyond that, um, in my opinion, I think it's, it becomes a distraction. You know, because you know when you're talking about the results, the end result of of something like you know right now or even during the week. You're not, that means you're not focused on the process. That's like um, it's like looking at the scoreboard, you know, during a game, um, and whether you're up seven or down seven, or where that that dictates how you play. It, does, it doesn't, you know, you, it's you focus on the the, the journey. You focus you focus on the process, and then you know, then you just add it up at the end and see where that takes you. You know, so. The hypotheticals of what if we do this, and what does that mean, and you know, comparing you know this road game to a road game a year ago, you know, for us, it's really not. That's not really significant. It doesn't really, it doesn't really um, help us prepare. Mel, on Saturday, uh, you talked about having sort of a special plan, you know, for this game with the with the time difference. And I know a second ago you talked about going to bed earlier. Is there anything else that's, that 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 entails to get these guys ready for that type of trip? And does your NFL experience help you with that at all? And also, you know, is there anything about like uh, contingencies for air quality or anything like that? Because I saw last week that that was something that they were sort of monitoring out there, and I, you know, potential delays or something like that. I guess at a certain threshold or whatever. Yeah. So we laid out uh, our. Our sports science team, you know, and uh, our strength coaches and um, you know, our trainers, you know, laid out some points of emphasis for our for our players and some some protocols that we're going to use, you know, this week and then on the trip. Um, and uh, and so um, we're going to make sure those things get done and make sure we're in the best position to, you know, to be able to to compete you know, at a high level and, you know, be at our best physically and mentally. Um, I'm not sure if I want to go into the details of all that. Is that about more of a time zone, you think, or the time on an airplane and what that does? It's all part of it. It's all part of it. Yep. It's all part of it. Now, looking back at Saturday, you were able to get a lot of true freshman game experience, and, but also get Noah some pretty critical snaps, I guess. How important right now is that to have a guy with a backup now who does have that game experience? I guess what were what were the things that you saw that he drew from that experience, and some of those younger guys that were able to get in and get some important snaps? Yeah, experience experience is uh, is good. I mean, it's nothing like being out there, you know, especially um, you know at home and in front of seventy thousand people and you know things like that. It's uh, that's a uh, that's a good experience to have, and if you can go out there and have some success, that's even better, you know. So what what did I see out of Noah? I saw the same thing that we see from him in practice every single day, you know. And I've mentioned it before, you know. Here, I mean, he's he's a good player, and he throws a really good ball. He's got a lot of arm talent, you know, and he's smart, and he's a competitor. Um, I think his, in high school, his, his record, I think he maybe lost one game his entire high school career. So, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's, uh, I wasn't surprised when he was able to go in and, you know, uh, execute the game plan. He did a really good job, you know, with um, getting his, 
getting us into the right right plays in the run game as well. Mel, you talked about the defensive unit really doing a good job filling in in Darius's absence and following up on what Chris said, Noah looked like he did a pretty good job when, when Peyton was out. Can you talk a little bit about how your players have kind of really embraced that next man up mentality? Yeah, well, um, we've, we've talked to our guys from, from the very beginning is that, that we're going to need everyone and we coach everyone in, in practice. Um, like during fall camp, I mean, everyone's getting coached. I mean, walk-ons are getting coached. Um, you know, we have, we have walk-ons that play uh, in the game um, that have significant roles. Um, and so, uh, because, you know, when, if something does happen, you know, injuries are a part of the game, unfortunately. Uh, when injuries do occur, um, you know, you got to put somebody in the game. And so the next man up is basically a starter. If you're in the game, you are a starter. That's the mentality. So we have to prepare, you have to, we have to prepare our guys that way. And, and, uh, and when you get an opportunity, you know, you need to be prepared, you need to be ready, and, you, and then, and, and, because you don't, you know, you have to make the most of the opportunity, you know, and so I see guys, um, with the credit to them and the coaches, I see guys that are ready for the, that are prepared for the moment to go in and execute the game plan. Now, I mean, it's not perfect um, by any stretch of the imagination, but we're able to go in there and execute and uh, and build our and build our depth, and that's that's critically important. It's a uh, it's a physical game. It's a it's a long season. Uh, the attrition, uh, attrition is, I mean, it, it can be it can be grueling at, at times, and so um, you know we we need we absolutely need everyone um, to prepare. I mean, you could go in. You could go in a game, and we we tell our we 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 ask our coaches to make sure that every player going into a game knows what their role is. Everyone has a clear and defined role. Hey, if you're gonna, if, you know, if you're a starter, that's your role. What what's your role? You know, what's your role on special teams? What's your role as a backup? As a rotational guy? You know, maybe you're not going to play. You know, I mean, even if a grenade goes off, you're not going in. But you do still have a a role on, on the uh, on the if you're dressed, you know, to you know help your teammates, you know, bring energy, you know, things like that. And so, um, you know, all, every role is significant in the game. And so, um, you don't want you don't want guys to go in the game and, and have drop off. You know, that's bad. That's bad football right there now. And that's how you get that's how you get beat. Jack Stone made his first uh, career field goal on Saturday after missing his, fir or his first attempt on uh, in the previous game. How important is that for a kicker, especially a young kicker, to get one under his belt before he travels across the country um, mm. to play Washington? Yeah, um, I thought I thought it was, I thought it was good. You know, he he's been kick he's been kicking the ball well in practice, and then he was able to take it to the game. So um, I know all the guys were happy for him. You know. And uh, and so you know he's gonna now he's got that experience and you know and he can build upon that. So I, I thought it was I thought it was great. Jacoby has a mindset of why can't I give six seconds every play? How do you think that's benefited him in these first two games? And how will that benefit you guys as a whole as you go on the road now? Well, he's a he's a mature he's a mature player, mature young man and. Uh, he understands opportunity, and he he understands um, he understands like what it takes to play great football. And um, you know, we are, we we ask our players uh, to be in the best condition, and and so that's the foundation of what we do. And when when you're in when you're in shape, then. Um, there's no reason why you can't you can't give 100%. You know when 
giving a hundred percent is like totally your choice. And so that's a mindset. And we talk about, you know, playing 60 minutes a full 60, not 20 or 30 or, you know, or 55, like a full 60 minutes, you know, one play at a time, six seconds of play. Um, and that takes intentional focus. You have to make a, you have to decide, you have to choose ahead of time that that's how you're going to, that's how you're going to play the game. And in order to play the game that way on game day, you have to practice that way. And he, that's how he practices, you know? And so, um, and that's why you're able to have success. And, you know, and it's basically just, you know, playing hard with extreme effort. We had three things um, that are mission critical for us. Um, the first thing is knowing what to do. Know what to do. Second thing is play with extreme effort. And the third thing is to be physical. Play physical, hard nose, hard hitting football. You know, and you can do those things, then you, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a, a, a great chance to have success. And when you see Jacoby play, you know, that's how he plays. He knows what to do, he plays hard, you know, and he's physical. And so um, and he's having success on the field. Mel, I see you're wearing the T-shirt of the week again. Uh, mm -hmm. Big difference Saturday from what it was in week one in terms mm -hmm. of creating turnovers. How much of that is taught and how much of it is guys like Jacoby and Kendall Brooks just flying around and always being at the ball? It's both. I mean, it, but we, 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 the ball, it's the ball, the ball, the ball. I mean, it's, it's, it's a turnover margin. Like we put a, we put a graphic up today and I'm not going to, talk about the teams, the particular teams, but when you look at uh, like win-loss, um, like in, in college football, I think it was like all but three teams that, you know, won the turnover margin, won the game. And you score 28 points off of turnovers, I don't care who you're playing. I mean, that gives you a chance, you know, there. And, and, and Forcing takeaways, you know, that's a that's a conscious effort to do that. So we we practice that and we emphasize that and we we show video, uh, we show NFL film, we show other colleges, we show like you know uh, different ways to 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 get the ball off of guys and we do drills and then and then and then population is key. So like if you see some of those see some of those takeaways, you know like. Uh, you know, population, how many guys are there, you know, trying to get the ball out and then, you know, getting close to the quarterback, you know, um, we're rushing coverage, working together and then, you know, getting the ball off the quarterback or getting the ball off of, off of uh, you know, running backs and things like that or playing fast and forcing guys to speed up, you know, and the balls on the ground, things like that and getting population in a swarming mentality. You know, because our, our, the job on defense is to, to stop them and get the ball back to the offense and score or set up a score and create a short field because, you know, like the, the uh, you know, the, 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 where the drive starts on offense has, you know, the, like where it is, like the score probability is different. You know, it's, a, it's a lot more favorable, favorable to you, like if you start closer to the goal line, you know, so we give our offense a short field and not ask them to drive, you know, 80, 90 yards. You know, that's not a that's not a winning formula. You know, we have to we have to win the turnover mar margin and we have to take the ball off of people and they're not just gonna give it to you all the time. You have to you have to you know, you have to force it and it's a it's a conscious, conscious effort. Um, and when you don't take the ball away on defense, you're not playing great defense. You're not playing good defense. I mean even if you're you know, if you're like we if you um, are like stopping a run and you're playing good pass defense and like you're getting off the field on third down things like that, you know, that's, you know, that's required. You know, I mean, that's kind of like, you know, that's solid, but you, you're not going to do anything significant, you know, as a football team, because you need to take the, you need to take the ball away and, and you know, set up scores and, and score on defense and things like that. That's, that's, if you look, just look at the turnover margin in college football and in the NFL, it's, it's like a huge, huge factor. And so, um, I mean, I just can't tell you how much we talk. I mean, we talk about, and then, and then taking care of the football is, uh, you, you, don't, you don't give it away and you take it away. Um, you know, 
you, you give yourself the best chance. I mean, just go and look at some of those some of those games that everyone was talking about. Uh, you know, Saturday, and look at the turnover margin. And it, it tells a story. I was wondering, two games in, what you think of the running attack with you know being revamped with Bruce Ardenberger uh, leading the way? What, what do I think about it? The run game. <clears throat> yeah. So um, it starts up front with the line, and um, and then with the with the tight ends, you know, blocking and the receivers, you know, you know, being physical and blocking and, and getting that done, and then. And then uh, with the scheme, making sure that we can identify the fronts and things like that and, and get in and, in and out of the, the proper calls, run, and then the runners understanding the, the, the power of the play and where, 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 where the play is supposed to be running, like, and, then, and then getting it and then running hard. You know? And so, and you know, making guys missing and you know, running through the smoke, and you know, having really good contact balance and things like that, and taking care of the ball and being hungry and getting what you can get, and so what you see with those, and Elijah did a nice job when he got in as well. What you see with those guys is um, those guys are getting the ball, and they're running behind their pads with with some hat speed and, and getting their pass on there and they're and they're and they're getting it like they're getting vertical and and getting getting tough yards. And then, you know, and, and there's there's room in there too on some of those runs where, you know, they're not getting touched for a little you know, for a few yards too and that's you know that's a credit to the to the offense line and, and, and the tight ends and, 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 and receivers blocking. So um, we need to be able to run the ball on our terms. We need to be able to do that, um, and it's you know that's not the easiest thing to do in the world. But you have to be able to to do that. If you're one dimensional, you can't run the football. You you can't beat good teams. You're gonna be you're gonna be in trouble if you're one dimensional and, and guys are pinning their ears back, you know, and pass rush and you know not honoring the run and you know your play action doesn't work and things like that. I mean, it's just a bad situation. So um, we need to be able to run the football. And so far. It looks like you know we're making some progress with that, and we're able to get some get some yards. Uh, I mean, the guys are averaging like five yards carry, seven yards a carry, like in that game, and things like that. It's going to be a t it's going to be a lot tougher this week. Just wanted to clarify on Jaden Reed. You said he's sore, but will be ready when he's ready. You do think that will be by Saturday? Well, I mean, whenever that is, you know. Okay, and then my second question, just aside from the travel and the preparation and being away from home, what do you think is the biggest challenge that Washington presents? Well, it's not just one thing. It's the 100, 100 things because they're a good team. Uh, and so and they have really good schemes, offense, defense, especially as they put a lot of pressure on you. They have a lot of good players. They're well coached. You know, so, I mean, you name it. I mean, I mean they're scoring a lot of points. You know, they got big guys up front on defense. They got speed. I mean, it's a, you know, that place is like a, it's like a hornet's nest going in there to play. Um, I, mean, I know they had the first couple of games, they had like 50,000 in there. Um, I expect it to be, I expect it to be a, you know, really hostile environment. And um, I expect them to actually be better than what, what they've even shown on tape. You know, so it's um, it's not just one thing. Um, it's uh, it's across the board. You know, we'll be challenged. Mel, after the last game, uh, Peyton Thorne expressed frustration with his own accuracy, throw, tired of throwing the ball high and whatnot. What is your level of concern in that regard? Uh, what is my level of concern? Um, I'm not concerned. Are you concerned about him being frustrated at all, or, or no? No, that's no. I'm not. Uh, I'm wondering. You, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago with with Peyton having his, have a talk with him with facing his dad. I'm wondering with Jeremy being a freshman and obviously his past with Washington. Do you have to have similar conversations with him to kind of keep him focused? And, and I guess what have you seen through two games? With his performance and production uh, for, within the offense, 
Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to be a factor, you know, with him. He's, he's, uh, but he's done, a, he's done a nice job so far. And that's why he's, why he's in the game is because, you know, he's, he's done a really good job, um, like in practice. So we have confidence that he can go in the game and, and make plays. Um, you know, but, but his relationship with, with, uh, with Washington and things like that, you know, I'm, I, I don't, I don't think that that's going to be that's going to be a factor, uh, really. I mean, a lot of our guys we have on our team have been recruited by other places, you know. Did they that play. Minimize something for the coaching change out there? Excuse me. Did that minimized by the coaching change out there. It's not necessarily going mm -hmm. to the same staff. Yeah. So again, when we're talking about preparing for a game. Um, you know, where does our focus need to be? Like today, you know, tomorrow, the next day, how do we stack days? You know, that all that stuff doesn't doesn't matter, don't have anything to do with it. Uh, Mel, after the Western game, uh, Jacoby was talking to us about, you know, play, sort of being having a chess player's mindset, setting up your next move and having counters and whatnot. It seemed like he did show up quite a few different things in this game from from week one. Uh, just what did you think about that? Maybe the diversity of moves and skills that he's showing from from one to two, and uh, and I'm kind of curious, do you, have you coached a guy like that, like in your career? Does he remind you of anybody, like having that versatility up and down? Um, in the pass rush, just does he is he anybody is he like anybody else you've coached? Well, I mean, he he is a ver he is versatile. So I think what I think what we're seeing is. We're seeing a um, a young man that can that has shown you know high level pass rush ability. He's you know demonstrated that, and um, and which is good because it's hard to find your pass rushers. And so when you when you when you see that you know you look at it and say okay well I think you know I, I think this I think this guy this guy, that looks that looks good. And then, you know, and, and people are asking me, and I'm telling them that it's real. You know, it's real. He's he can do that. You know, so uh, Coach Coleman, you know, BT, um, Coach Jordan, they do a really nice job with those guys with pass rushing, coordinated pass rushing, and work on it quite a bit. Bless you. And um, and uh, so. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's and he's got some versatility with that. It's all about what we do next. It really is. I mean, um, last season we had we we started the season having the press conferences on on um, on Tuesday. And, you know, we practice in the morning, and so um, and I was just ha having a hard time with that because when I would come here, here on Tuesday. We would um, we would had already had two practices on the next opponent. And I was still building questions about the last game, you know. So, um, so that's why we're doing it today. And we've already had a, our first practice on on Washington. And so, um, you know, I, I get it that you know that that's part of it is to talk about the last game and things like that, you know. Um, so what we saw out of Jacoby is, is legit, legit, you know, deal, rush and stuff like that. But right now it's, 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 it's completely about what we do next. Nothing matters about any of that for us, um, you know, whether it's him or me or anyone else, it's all about stacking today. You know, we've got this, 107 or whatever. We got a lot of work to do today. A lot of work. I mean, it's not even. You know, we the day hasn't been stacked yet. So, but if you have any more questions about uh, Akron, I'll be happy to ask answer them. No, um, he's not that that I, not that I've coached. I mean, uh, been around. Quite a few players, um, but uh, 
you know, even the scouts, are, they, they always ask you because it's all about a comparison. Like, okay, does he remind you of this guy or that guy? So you can kind of, because you have to try to put him in like, okay, it's, you know, height, length, body type, this, that, you know. And so I can't say that, that anyone comes to mind, you know, at this point. Um, but at some point, you know, someone may pop into my head and say, oh, he reminds me of such such, but that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Hey Mel, this isn't technically an Akron question, but I'm kind of spinning. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm spinning it forward. Uh, Jaden Reed had the punt return for the touchdown. It was called back. Even with that being said, are you encouraged with what you've seen with your return units through the first two games? Yeah, we we were we we're. That's a no, I guess. Have I been impressed? Yeah. Well, you, yeah. Have you? Or, no, no. I said, have you been encouraged? Encouraged. encouraged. Yeah, yeah. That's a little bit different. Yeah. No. I. I no, I, we were encouraged. I mean, we that was a that's a shame because you know that was a that was a really good return, you know, and uh, guys were playing hard, you know, so it was just unfortunate that that got called back. Um, but you know, we showed punt returns, NFL punt returns for touchdowns and kickoff returns for touchdowns last week in the meeting. Like we were ready to pop. We were like, hey, this is the we're, this is the week, you know, like we, the practices have been good, you know, things are starting to come together, some of the timing and guys getting on guys and, and, uh, and then we had a, you know, we had a returnable ball and, and, uh, and so, you know, we are encouraged, you know, with that and then, um, and then we're like, we were close like on a, it doesn't look, it didn't look like it, but we were close on a kickoff return also, it was just, we had a, a mechanical issue and, and you know the off returner was trying to catch the ball and then I mean it kind of got clogged up in there but we had everything else was kind of blocked up so um, we just got to keep chopping you know on this return game because that's huge that's field position you know. That's a cumulative two game question you said all camp and right up until the opening game that you really love this team. I don't think you say that about all teams. Two games in, I assume that hasn't changed. What's well, I haven't the... had that many teams. Well, okay. Do you love them all? <laughs> I guess the question is, what's the ingredient you really like about this team? I like that we can, we can have real conversations all the time. You know, we just, it's just a, it's just a truth program. I mean, we talk, we have real talk in the meetings and on the field, in the locker room after the game, before the game, at the hotel. I mean, it's, it's, it's straight down the middle, you know. Um, and uh, and that's, what, that's what I love about this team. And you can do that when, when, when players or coaches don't get uh, uh, offended, get offended, you know, when, when, we're, when we're talking about the truth, you know. <clears throat> And it goes both ways. I mean, Chuck Bradley, I mean, he's 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 on he's on, he's on my butt like right before the half telling me I need to stay neutral. You know, because I you know, he told me we don't I tell guys, I say that we don't need all these gyrations like we're talking about in practice and in games and he texted me, he said they were exaggerations or whatever, so I knew what he meant, you know, because I was animated before the half. He's on me about being being, you know, being neutral, like during the game, you know. And then he showed, then he sends me a, a photo of me in the air, jumping in the air with like a little bunny rabbit on the deal. You know, he texts that to me, you know. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was something. It was a bunny rabbit head, you know. That's coming from Chuck, so how can you not love that? You know, holding a, a, a player, holding the coach accountable for being neutral, you know, on the sideline during the game, you know. So it's the truth, you know. And so I'm not offended. And certainly he's not offended when I coach him. And, you know, so it goes both ways. So I love that about this team. Did you become less animated? Pardon me? After he did that, did you become less animated? Well, that, that whole moment was over. And there was not there was not another opportunity for me to be that way, but certainly you know 
I mean, the message was clear, was that, you know, he wanted me to just calm down, you know, stay focused. And focus is a skill. So we all need to continue to, to get better and, 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 and practice that. Well, it was hard to tell, but the, the, the picture, I think, he sent out, there was some error, but I think they took the photo when I was on the way down. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time.